This is Keys to the Shop, episode 318, why your shop is the key to the success of coffee. Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Keys to the Shop, where we give you insights, inspiration, and the tools you need to grow as a coffee service professional. My name is Chris DeFirio, and I am your host for the show so happy to have you here. Really, um, if you have not subscribed to the show, definitely hit subscribe whenever you get the opportunity, wherever you're listening to this podcast, and you'll always be updated with new content as it comes out. We average about um, 10 broadcasts every month, and so there's a bit to keep up on from the main episodes that you're listening to now to the shift breaks on Thursdays and then Founder Fridays, Rate of Rise from Roast Magazine. There's a lot here at Keys to the Shop, and I'm so happy that you've chosen to uh, tune in to the show. So for sure, subscribe. And also, if you would leave a rating or review on the show over at Apple Podcasts, that would be awesome. And then finally, sharing these episodes would be amazing. Um, Share the episode, share the show. A lot of people don't know that Keys to the Shop exists at all. And um, over the years, it's been almost five years now, we've managed to I talk to so many great professionals from all over the world and collect a lot of um, topics and conversations that help you build a better coffee shop, a better career, um, a more well-rounded perspective on coffee and life in coffee. And so I definitely want more people to hear about it. So if you have the opportunity to share the episode, share the show, I would really appreciate it. Now, beyond the podcast, one of the ways that keys to the shop Uh, offers help to those of you in the coffee industry is through consulting and coaching. There's a lot of different ways that Keys to the Shop Consulting can help you with your operations, your quality, your people, and everything in between, either remotely or on site. And I would love to talk with you about how that might look for your business. To have a conversation and explore whether Keys to the Shop Consulting is right for you, go ahead and email me, chris at keystotheshop.com. Let's set up a conversation and have a chat about that. Again, the email for Keys to the Shop Consulting, chris at keystotheshop.com. Now, today's episode of Keys to the Shop is brought to you by the Ground Control Cyclops Brewer from Voga Coffee, the name in innovative brewing technology worldwide. Um, They have absolutely revolutionized what we can expect from batch brew coffee with their SCA award-winning technology. The Ground Control Cyclops Brewer can really just conjure such great flavors from your coffee, a wide variety of flavors that you might not have even thought possible at first from your coffee. It's like getting to know your coffee all over again. And then it lets you control that process to the nth degree. It is truly a miracle of technology for brewing. And on top of that, it also allows you to brew things like tea, batched iced lattes, batched cold brew. Um, This is a workhorse. It's versatile. It levels up your quality. And you should for sure check out their website, groundcontrol.coffee, to learn even more about this amazing piece of equipment. Uh, If you're looking for differentiation, uh, level up in your quality, versatility, and something that is truly an investment into crafting an amazing coffee experience for your guests, then I think you should look into getting a ground control Cyclops Brewer from your store. Again, go visit them at their website over at groundcontrol.coffee. Today's episode of Keys to the Shop is also brought to you by the Pacific Barista Series. That is the world's leader in plant-based performance beverages. What makes them the world's leader? Their line of plant-based beverages are not only designed for baristas, but they're actually tested by some of the world's best, most discerning professional baristas so that when you get this in your store, you know that it's going to perform the way you always dreamed a plant-based beverage would. Stands up to the steaming process, creates an amazing silky texture for latte art, and the balance of the flavor keeps the focus on the coffee. All of this combined creates this amazing plant-based beverage experience that I think you'll want all of your customers to have. You can find out more information about the Barista Series line over at pacificfoodservice.com. Get this in your store and try it for yourself. If you're looking to serve your customers the best in plant-based beverages, then it has to be the Barista Series from Pacific. Okay, everyone. Well, today I wanted to kind of discuss with you the importance of your coffee shop in the worldwide success of specialty coffee and coffee in general. Um, This is something that, you know, is a bit of a trope 
we toss this around in specialty coffee a lot that you know, baristas and coffee shops were the last link in the supply chain and everything kind of hinges on what we do in the shop. And we see it uh, and in, in, in hear it so often that I think it loses its power and its importance. And I wanted to dive into it a little bit today because we can tend to be pretty isolated. Yes, we have our communities, we have the internet, and it offers us a very surface level experience of community um, that, you know, to sort of supplement what we're doing day to day. If you're an owner operator, if you're a manager, if you're just a full-time barista in a coffee shop, you know how precious community can be because it gives you a fuller uh, picture of what could be out there. But beyond that, it's hard to really discern the kind of impact that you and your business and every little motion that you do behind the bar has on the uh, coffee industry as a whole. When we talk about something as big as the coffee industry, um, we want to think about something like, uh, when we talk about something as big as the coffee industry, it can seem inaccessible. It's something that is out there, but we are in it. We are it. You are it. Millions of people who make up the coffee industry create the current status quo. They create the reality that is uh, around, you know, quality, uh, prices, marketing, um, just general perception and mindset towards coffee. And of course, I think uh, that it all kind of stems from our mindset towards coffee, where we uh, may grow up drinking coffee. It might not be great coffee, but our, all of our stories tend to be somewhat similar in that we have a coffee uh, understanding or knowledge, and then we you know, eventually find specialty coffee or we have an epiphany about its greater meaning, and it draws us to become professionals and mind the depths of of what is in the industry and, and what where our place in it is and how we can affect change. Um, and after that initial kind of honeymoon phase, a lot of us, and I, I'll put my hand up here in my office and say, it's easy to get lost in the work and then forget a little bit about that passion and, you know, affecting change. Now we're just really trying to survive and we're, we're focused on our business and we, we start to discount the um, romantic notion that we can really impact the global industry or change the world, you know, quote unquote, change the world. But nothing could be further from the truth. And it's kind of weird how this it's this inverse relationship. Like um, you, the, the busier you get in coffee, the less you think you might be changing the world because the more mired in reality of business you are, but the more you're actually changing the world. Uh, so your perception of how much change you're actually accomplishing goes down as you accomplish more change. You can call that humility. You can call it just being really busy and you can't really tell. But I'm here to tell you that whether you can perceive it or not, every little action that you do in your coffee shop has a collective impact. We together as an industry have a collective impact. And that's why we harp on details so much on this show. And I believe any other um, platform out there that seeks to reach a mass of people first you know, would hope for individuals to adopt certain practices and then those individuals to influence others. And it has this ripple effect, this mimetic response um, that creates a new level of quality for the rest of the industry. You can clearly see this if you've been around for any length of time in the industry. You know, we've had people on the show recently who've been in the industry for 20, 30 years even and they will tell you how different things are today and how they became different and in a lot of ways better is based on individuals taking a chance to level up in green coffee or um, the way that technology allows coffee to be expressed in espresso or brewing, um, the quality of coffee shops build out in our service standards, things like that. We've become better at coffee shops as we've gone on in the industry. And so the average 
lower end, I would say, coffee shop, anyone who is maybe in the middling stages of coffee shops, would have been considered, I think, 20 years ago, an absolute superstar in coffee. Now, that's the same as today when you think about, well, I think about my performances at the U.S. Barista Championships in 2007 or, you know, my latte art back in 2004, 5, and 2009. And I'm like, you know, the people today are so much better. What makes them better? Why are they better? Well, part of it is because there is this foundational layer of practice that has been, you know, put down by you know, we'll say the old guard or people that are just like hashing it out and being innovative for their time. And people iterate on top of that. People uh, innovate on top of that. And so the latte artist of today is way better than the latte artist of my day. <laughs> and because the base level of beginner understanding is set higher. And then on top of that, it's that um, there are more, there's more sharing capabilities there is more opportunity to learn from other people uh, than there used to be. And that's an incredible tool that we have for good. We can use uh, our influence through social media and other means to influence things in the right direction. And all of this is seen by the customer. The customer will see the kinds of things that we are doing in coffee and they will respond to it and we will pay attention to what they how they respond and then change or continue accordingly this is the way things grow and develop now that doesn't mean that everything we do is going to be positive the same kind of power to influence things in a positive way exists for negative things um where when we talk about toxic work situations where uh, people are managing and leading in bad ways and hurting people around them. That also has a mimetic effect. It creates an environment that rewards certain bad behaviors by making them acceptable and therefore causes people who have the propensity to be those types of bad managers or leaders to feel more confident in doing the same things. Or it influences people in the coffee shop to take on those negative mentalities and pass it on down to their coworkers, or eventually if they become a boss somewhere, they become that kind of boss. So this tool of influence that we have goes both ways. And that's why we stress the importance of um, measured and mindful growth and assessing where you truly are and assessing yourself as a professional, especially. We talk about leadership and management so much on this show because, because it starts with your mindset as a professional and how you conduct yourself and the way that we operate as people is we want to quickly categorize things so we don't have to think about them anymore and that's why coffee shops have such a um, important role to play in the supply chain and why so much hinges on whether or not the experience is very good um, because a customer will determine their future purchases for years, decades, based solely on one, maybe two experiences that they've had in a coffee shop. And that is our responsibility to make sure that it is a positive one and that what we are giving people as an inheritance, a mindset inheritance, is something that's purposeful. I know 100% that I have given bad service in my time. And I've probably caused customers to have a, a negative impression of coffee shops, that they, they felt that maybe I was unapproachable as a barista because I was having a really bad day. And they felt that I was, you know, not giving them the, the right kind of options when they were curious about the coffee, they were curious about what to get at home. And I didn't really put in 100% effort to try to get them the coffee that I thought might be really good for them. And I'm sure that some people went home disappointed. It's like I say to my clients, you know, I, I know what I know today because of things I've done well and things I've done not so well. And this is one of those things I think we all have in our history. We have examples of how we have steered people to a um, negative view of specialty coffee and we have steered people to a positive view of it. The question is, how do we as a coffee shop 
industry, let's just isolate coffee shops and retail, how do we collectively decide to um, create a more predictably positive uh, outcome from this? The, you know, specifically, obviously, talking to those of you who are listening to this show, over the years, there is sort of a, um, I don't know, maybe a keys to the shop mentality or a keys to the shop philosophy on what constitutes a great coffee experience. It really hinges on quality, operations, and people. You've got to make sure that all three of those things are heavily and deeply considered and given the proper attention to create an experience that is positive for the guests. And I think if we just focused on those as a headline, as as categories of things to pay attention to in our shops perpetually, then I think we would begin to see more predictably positive experiences uh, in our coffee shops, which then impacts the supply chain. You know, we talk about how we need consumers to buy more and better coffee uh, for higher prices. You know, how do we do this? We think, oh, it's too cheap. We can't really ask them to pay more. And um, But, but we, we really should because wine, because cocktails, because uh, whatever example we use. But here's the thing. We have not really set up our coffee shops to be able to demand that much more from the experience. We've talked about this a long time ago, maybe two years ago, how it's not about the quality necessarily. At a certain point, the coffee quality is going to reach this equal playing field, this level. I've gone through lots of different subscription services over the years. And I think if you have too, if you've gotten subscription coffee from a lot of different roasters over the years, dozens, hundreds, or whatever, you'll start to realize that there are a lot of great roasters out there. And there's almost no major city in the United States or even the world at this point that doesn't have some access to one, two, or more specialty coffee experiences that tick the box of quality. There's only so far you can go from there. Really, what is going to impact people the most is the long game mentality towards influencing markets to value something more through experiential value, through building trust in consistent offerings. You have consistent quality for sure. That's a given that has to be there. Um, a consistent service over time. It's just people are taken care of as customers and people are taken care of as staff. So how does all that happen? How do we get to play the long game and put down roots in a community and create trust that fosters a positive mindset that makes people more willing to pay more money for the kind of coffees that we are faithfully expressing in our coffee shops that has this virtuous uh, cycle of supporting the industry. How we do it is through our operations, through operational excellence, through business excellence, the making sure that we're not just um, uh, passionate about coffee. We open a coffee shop. We buy the best coffees. We have the best machines, and you know we're pouring great latte art. And uh, but our staff are paid terribly. But we are you know just throwing communication to the wind. We don't really do that very well, and we don't really. You know, our checklists are maybe five years old, and they don't. Half of them are not relevant. But you know this is uh you know we're we grew organically. You know we're organic, right? And so think about your coffee shop as a cultivated environment, okay? Um, not many coffee shops can really survive without uh, this kind of cultivation. So similar to like coffee comes from Ethiopia and <laughs> grows wild there and it tastes delicious. Your coffee shop is not coffee from Ethiopia. It's a cultivated product. It has to be tended to and raised right and you know, it can't just be thrown to the wind and then expect it to just flourish like that. It has to be cultivated and given a lot of attention. And that's why I worry so much about people expanding their coffee shops too fast and too furiously because they want to have an empire, but they absolutely minimize their impact based on that, especially in smaller independent scenarios. As you expand without having really perfected your first store or your first two stores and you just keep on adding more opportunities, more opportunities to your portfolio, 
you start to see that it's getting out of control. You're not really happy with the experience that people are having. Staff seem to be turning over more. Customers don't seem as thrilled about the the place. The shops are looking a little dingier and dirtier, and people aren't smiling as much. I see this all the time. And expansion could be really positive, or it can be a disease uh, that we just feel we it's a compulsory thing. Oh, we got to make open another one and open another one. When really, what we need to do is make the one we have absolutely sing, and then you know go from there and mindfully expand to another one that we then make very successful and profitable, build trust in the community, do things consistently, uh, serve our people and our customers so well, and expand from there again. Doing that responsibly is something that takes time. And maybe the best thing that could happen to specialty coffee is a slower expansion of retail coffee in general so that we can have more consistency that impacts positively the mindset of the consumer so that they get a more predictably great experience from us and not just this experience where we promise everything and we deliver kind of the wish.com version of it and we hope that we can kind of gaslight people into experiencing it the way that we think in our marketing we wanted them to experience it like no 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 uh you didn't experience a bad coffee experience what what you experienced was actually um you not learn it knowing how to drink coffee well or taste coffee well. It didn't taste bad. It, it just was your ignorance of it. But the barista wasn't rude. You were ju- you just had too high of an expectation of service workers. See, uh, you know, it's your problem. If we if there's a complaint you have about a coffee shop, you just don't understand what it's like to be in coffee. We have to stop this kind of uh, talk. Y- yes, of course. Customers aren't going to understand what it's like to be in the service industry. That's a given. That's our job to understand that, right? Um, It's really asinine to continually hear the buck being passed to the customer as if their dissatisfaction with what we offer is really only their fault. We don't grow that way when we're completely trying to pass blame. We grow when we take responsibility for our actions, for the decisions that we make in our coffee shops. And when we do this with the mentality that our little shop can influence the global economy, the global market, the global industry of coffee, we will start making better decisions with the mundane things that we believe may be so separate from that big industry of coffee, that every little thing that we do has a collective impact on what happens in the future. That to me is a more solid foundation to build an industry on so that when we do expand, when we do see an opportunity that is a good opportunity, we can expand into it knowing that we've done our due diligence at home with the things that we have. To use sort of a a biblical metaphor here, it's when you're faithful with little, you can be faithful with much. You will be given more. And I think that mentality is really helpful for business. Be faithful with what you've got, and then you'll be able to see success with things that are added to it later on. And you'll say to yourself, I'm glad we took extra time. We don't help farmers. We don't help the coffee industry when we close our doors because of irresponsible expansion or just negligent operations. We owe it to them and we owe it to ourselves and the people that we are going to have to take on as employees um, and then the people that trust us as customers to do well, to do well. The real key here is is to have a mindset for long-term cultivation in your coffee shop, focusing on your operations, your people, your quality, and just delivering excellence day in and day out. You have an incredible impact on um, what happens in the future of coffee right where you are. It may not be flashy, but it's probably the most impactful thing that happens every single day. And I hope that today's episode and the things that we've been featuring here on Keys to the Shop over the years has been helpful to help you in that cultivation process. So if you have any questions, comments, or feedback about this episode or any episode of Keys to the Shop, feel free to email me, chris at keystotheshop.com. 
It's also where you can reach me for Keys to the Shop Consulting, Chris at Keys to the Shop dot com. Now, you know, 2022 is coming up and talking about cultivating a great place to work and a great place to go with a customer, uh, just a good coffee shop. Coffee Fest Trade Show is the place to go if you're looking to supplement your education and, you know, get resourced to build a thriving coffee shop. It's 30 years. In 2022, it's going to be 30 years that Coffee Fest has been offering the industry the best event to go to to learn about and be equipped to run a great coffee retail experience. The new set of cities for 2022 is New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, and then Seattle. There's seminars, lectures, workshops, uh, trainings. There's the show floor. There's a latte art competition, cold brew competition, and of course, all the networking you get to do with like-minded professionals. Go to coffeefest.com to register today and learn more. You can also go to CoffeeFest365, which is CoffeeFest's new online learning platform for more resources from CoffeeFest. That's really exciting. That's coffeefest365.com. And I hope to see you at one of these shows. I'm there giving lectures, judging latte art, and it's always exciting to meet these to the shop listeners. Again, to learn more information and register today, go to coffeefest.com. And with that, that is the end of our show today, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that today's episode was impactful and helpful. And as always, I hope this episode has truly given you keys to the shop.